Attila Total War, Western Roman Empire, legendary difficulty. 100 turns is what I'll give myself. Can I survive for 100 turns? Can Rome thrive? Oh, I bet you'd like to know. I bet you'd like to know indeed. Let's find out. Roma Invicta. Glorious Rome. We are cut in half. We control the West. Our brother controls the East. Arguably, he's in a much better position than us. Everything looks fine and dandy. Let's take a look at the strategic overview. We are massive. We control like a quarter of the world easily. However, all of this is very temporary in nature. Everybody up north here is going to declare war on us. People down south here, very likely to declare war on us. The people People in Caledonia and Hibernia all are going to declare war on us. In short, Rome is about to have the worst disaster of all disasters thrown at it. For those of you who are in the know, this is the point in time where the empire essentially started its rapid collapse. The world will burn. That is pretty much the theme of Attila. The world will burn and Attila will set it on fire. But there once was a dream that was Rome and I will not see her die while I am in command. And to that end, allow me to introduce my strategy. I saw this years and years ago by Legend of Total War and my goal at the start will be to retreat to Liguria, Venetia, Italia. So essentially, I'm withdrawing to Italy and these islands here. So these five regions are all that I'll be holding on to, and we will personally set the torch to all other regions. So what I'm going to do here is go into this list, demolish every single building that's not in Rome. I'll, I'll do that off camera because it's like a whole lot of clicking. So we're simply demolishing all of these buildings. What that's going to do is at least give us a little bit of money back to then build up our Italian holdings. And from there, we will try to weather the storm. There we go. Attila and the barbarians can't burn my empire when I burn it myself. So I am literally deleting every single building in every single province that's not in Italy. And anything we are holding on to, I'm just getting rid of the churches. They're one, very expensive, and two, Christianity has failed the empire. We need Jupiter and Sol Invictus and all those other good pagan gods on our side if we're going to win this, mostly because I don't want to face Attila with even more penalties on Legendary. Now, whatever's left is going to need a little bit of building up, which we will do as best we can. So in every capital, I want at least a waterworks building. It's going to have a governor's house, so a uh, administration building, and it's going to have an auditorium upgraded into a theater or a great theater. So those three are going to be vital early on. It's going to give us pagan support, which is cool. It's going to give us money, it's going to give us sanitation, and it's going to give us the required public order. Then every small settlement is going to have either its strategic resource, in this case, olive oil. It's going to have a field and another field. It's going to basically be all food, as much food as possible. So if you're looking at food, fields are amazing. And if you're looking at like stuff like sheep flocks or cattle herd, not only do they give you plenty of food, they also give you plenty of money. I wouldn't worry about wheat fields. I don't usually build these because they, they look good. They look great on paper. Mostly the additional income from fertility. But if you've played Attila, fertility, that is like a, a province modifier here, base fertility five, it goes down as the campaign progresses because global warming at this, well, no, global cooling at this time was the thing. So stuff's going to be less fertile. So fields are going to lose value while the cattle herds and the sheep uh, retain value, in short. A couple of exceptions. Aquileia is a border town. I want a guardhouse upgraded into a veteran garrison quarter. This is going to be a flashpoint that we'll be fighting here. And probably Segusio as well. Mostly, those are going to be my border settlements until I'm ready to push out. So I need those to be well defended. Other things, the ports here. Most places are going to have either a trade jetty, which is fine, or a fishing jetty, which is also fine. Military jetties, I tend to get rid of, except for the one in Tarentum. I like to make this my central fleet base. I'm going to quickly see if anybody wants to trade me with the Gaetulians down south. They don't really like me. Like, at all. But they are willing to trade with me, and I'm going to see if I can squeeze a little bit of money out of them. Yes. All right, so that might stay their hand as well. None of these other guys are really interested. They're pretty much just after our blood and our cities. So the next step is just to draw down all my armies. This guy, I'm not sure if I want to sail him all the way south, because he's got a long way to go. It's probably cheaper and more effective if I just get rid of them. Yeah, yeet, goodbye. Uh, these guys, we're all going to draw them south. Research-wise, I 
prefer to just get everything in the military tier first. So first I'm going to go for hereditary service to make all my troops a little bit cheaper. Then grab payment in kinds for that integrity bonus because integrity is a bit ass. And then faction management. I've never been good at this. I know I need to keep it somewhere in the middle, but I've never been good at this mechanic. We'll see what we can do. I remember that it's usually a good idea to adopt people just so we can get their influence into our faction. So we'll give that a try. So let's end that turn and see what happens. Spoiler, nothing good's gonna happen. Yeah, like this is gonna happen. Fun fact, this, like, well, this is a difficult battle, but it can be won if you left the army there. But I don't think I wanna fight this right now, though. We are intending to give it up anyway, so I'm just gonna auto-resolve it. It doesn't matter. You there, gather support. You there, gather support. You there, do nothing. All right, that's enough of politics. I, I don't like that anyway. So we now got a bunch of money that we're gonna be pouring into our central regions. The armies have made it home. I'm gonna park them in my cities. These guys still have a long walk to go, but they'll get home as well. These guys are making their way through Italy, and I'll sail them up there into Ajax. And these guys, I'm sailing up into Palma. Now, the reason I'm drawing all these units home, and I'm recruiting an army in, in, in the south here, is because this turn is the turn we burn everything. I'm going into this list of provinces here, and we're simply abandoning every single province that is not on our keep list. It's going to give us massive public order penalties resulting in revolts the turn afterwards. A revolt in every single province we hold, so we want armies in every single province we still hold, which is what we're working on. The food situation is also going to get better. As we abandon these territories, they will no longer be a drain on our resources because currently every single one of those territories is a net loss. They don't make any food, they don't make a lot of money, and as a result, the financial situation of the empire is not doing very well. And just like in Hearts of Iron, I'm withdrawing to defensible ground, the Northern Alps, and I am going to build up for the inevitable counterattack. Let me know in the comments, by the way, what your preferred strategy is for the Western Roman Empire, because I, I've not played this in a while, and I do remember this working out fairly well. Legend of Total War is amazing at this game, and if he says it works, I am inclined to believe him. Ah, th that is annoying. Oh, and Eastern Rome has immediately stabbed me in the back. Thanks, boys. Yeah, I'm not going to win this. There's no point in fighting this. I'm abandoning it anyway. There we go. Oh, look at that. I love that animation. It is so impressive. And that's my doorbell. Yeah, and with the fires of the world uh, extinguishing everything, there's just a couple of holdouts, uh, mostly the provinces that got attacked, I think. Let's just burn those manually. They're very likely to just get captured anyway. It Does, doesn't matter. We simply don't want them anymore. And so it begins. The Western Roman separatists move against the states. Yeah, I think I can take you boys. Yeet. Very bold maneuver. Unfortunately, it's, it's not going to go well for you. Goodbye. A couple of these settlements still can be abandoned because they are constantly being attacked, so be it. I just need to kill whatever rebels are still in my territory. The ones we absolutely must kill are the separatists because they give us... Can I see it here? No, I can't see it here. They give us a modifier to loyalty called Civil War because the Empire has fractured. Let's just finish off all these small rebellions. You always want to crush them early because if you wait even a little bit, they can gather a ridiculous amount of troops in a very short time, and it gets really annoying to deal with them. They can get very powerful troops very quickly, and it makes you go like, are we even playing the same game here? Yeah, that should mark the last of the rebels in our area. Goodbye. Ooh, love these animations. And with that, it's time to, well, march all the armies north. We're going to be setting up defenses near Aquileia, Verona, Genua, and Segovia. Gusto. Hopefully we can keep the empire in one piece, more or less. I'm going to set the taxes to high. Yes, it hurts public order, but it reduces immigration. And immigration, as the game progresses, just gets worse and worse in terms of public order. So this should offset things by enough that will be okay still. Fortunately, we're now also much less likely of ending up in, in pointless wars with our neighbors. Because except for these guys, we don't actually have neighbors anymore. Let's move Stilico up along with the army in Aquileia. Hit them there. This guy, head over to Aquileia, recruit some fresh boys. These three armies are going to go 
on a bit of a rampage while I continue building up what remains of the Empire. Ooh, these are also nice to pick up, at least early game. These mercenary Germanic warbands. They're axe infantry, and they have some excellent armor piercing damage, which is good for your Roman faction, because honestly, the Comita Tensis, or even the Legio, if we deploy those, they have barely any armor piercing like they're, they're, they're a solid staunch line of spears but they barely do any damage so if you can pick up like these mounted warbands these balistarii or the axe boys that is a win your army has a lot of staying power but not a lot of killing power all right let's bring our faction leader over here and see if we can tear shit up oh he can easily win that but why bring one army when I can bring three armies and just make this entire thing pointless? Just a big old stack of auto resolve. Goodbye. Personal glory for my leaders. Good. Just gonna sack this. I don't want these people here, so I'm simply going to raise it next. And next up, we hit that tile and that tile, and we move further inland. And again, why attack with one army when I have three? Goodbye. Let's just raise it. Yeah. And this way, at least, we'll have, like, a fairly secure border. Let the AI waste all its points building that place back up. Attrition everywhere. Attrition. Famines. More Christians. I don't want more Christians. Minimal losses because of overwhelming numbers. Oh, no. The Ostrogoths. I forgot about the Ostrogoths. We're gonna have to run back to Aquileia. Uh, the city might stand up to a siege. They're mostly shit units, but don't want to risk it. Things are precarious enough as it is, and I think I may have just been jibated into uh, moving out of position. I am a sucker for offensive units, so I, I do make some no, stupid mistakes every now and then. They want to pay me off for a peace treaty, so yes... Now I, yes, and then you can all go away. No, I can buy them off as well. Could also kill them off, but my army is on the other side. I don't want to just run after them the entire time. Ah, damn it. They're going to be raiding. That's what I hate about these barbarians. You know, make a peace deal, and then they just set up shop in your territory. I should have said no. I moved in for the kill. Well, at least we got the first tier of military stuff done. This is also not bad. None of these are particularly bad. Bad. Gives me Legios as well. Grab this first because it's only taking one turn. And then we'll go grab the food upgrades here. Yes. Yeah, these first couple of turns, nothing really goes the way you want it to. But I think we've done remarkably well. Even the Gauls want peace. You know what? I'm going to make peace with you. Allow you to build up there. And then we'll come and kill you. Let's also start making the beginnings of a bit of a fleet here. I can use that fleet to cover this sea zone in case any barbarians try to hop across the sea. Which is a... A, a risk. It would be very annoying getting armies from the north all the way down to the south. Oh, sweet. I can already convert to Greco-Roman paganism. And we will be the Rome of old once again. Now, this is gonna hurt, but I'm in it for the meme, if I'm honest. I want to say yes to this. Oh, right. That kills off my priests. Oh, well. Oh, I do wish there were more people to fight here. Kind of regret making these peace deals. I could fight the Vandals, though. They only have the one settlement. What if I were to declare war? Yeah, I think I kind of want to go over here fight the vandals get my army into that position uh, let's see if i can fight them easily there's no point in fighting this on the battle uh map they're all pretty much dead anyway so goodbye i think we've just wiped out the vandals with that well i guess in that case we're sacking this next turn and since I cannot condone people squatting on my borders, let's also take these guys out. Again, auto-resolve is just so powerful. Bring more guys than the other guy has. Well, bring more spears than the other guy has, and goodbye. Eh, it's another faction wiped out. I just realized, or right, recently discovered, the Vandals aren't actually gone. They're just somewhere down here. They, they had a second stack. Well, I guess that's a problem solved. They've been destroyed anyway. Well, I guess I don't have to deal with them then. Uh, I do want to take out the... What is this? The Visigoths, though? I think I'm at war with them. Am I? Not technically, but I do feel like it's something I want to take out. Time to take out this threat on our border. Simply declare war. I don't care about their allies. Yes, they'll join in. Fine, we'll fight them. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The Germanic band's annoying, and the Germanic war band as well. Like, they got a lot of armor piercing here. But if I can just auto-resolve these, it doesn't matter. And our border is, once again, secure. Oh, this is a bit of a problem. Most of what they're fielding isn't really a problem, but I don't have much 
killing potential myself. I got two Legios and two Levis Armature and one Scout Equites, and they've got a lot, and I think I just need to withdraw from this battle. Ah, uh, I don't really want to fight this. Retreat and see what happens. If I can get a more favorable outcome here. Oh, he really ran away. Oh, no. Well, this man is about to die, and there's really nothing I can do for him. <laughs> I'm sorry, Flavius. Goodbye. Uh, I should have brought up more troops or positioned my men better. And with the loss of that army, I should probably uh, s s set up a fresh one. What if I just declare war in Macedonia? What does that bring us? It's just gonna bring in the Visigoths. I don't care about the Visigoths. I think I can quickly overrun them. See, on Legendary, I never want to give them a fair fight. I'm just going to auto-resolve whatever I can with massive stacks. And if I have to fight, I'll fight. But I am going to give myself the best chance I can get. All right, Dirachium is taken. Just make sure everything gets repaired. I can sail the navy in here. Yeet. And then I'll use the navy to take Corinthus. I don't think they can really resist me at this point. Yeah, I could just occupy. And with one fell swoop, we've already <laughs> pretty much taken what we wanted. Oh, yeah. The garrison, the navy, and the two armies are dead. Eh, casualties fairly limited. It's good. Now we're simply going to occupy it, and with that, we have seized Macedonia. Just got to make some repairs. We'll be good to go. Just going to peel these armies back to this province for a little bit. We have some cleanup to do. We got to strengthen our admittedly somewhat beat up troops. All right, with Greece or Macedon under our control, I'm going to move these three armies back and we're going to head for Africa. It looks like the African kingdom that took the area is now being pressured by Western Rome. And I don't want to give them the satisfaction of actually conquering the place. So I'll, I'll conquer it for them, get the province of Africa back under my control. And and I'll just leave an army here uh, that I'm building up as a garrison force. So one army should be able to hold that province reasonably well. I can always bring more troops south if I have to. Oh yeah, I can take Carthage in like instantly. But I also need to take this down south here. You move a little closer. I think you're about as close as you can get. We'll take out Hadramentum. Not a fair fight in sight. This is how I like to play. Simply occupy. I think we took out their fleet as well. Brilliant. I can move this army in support of the attack on Carthage. Oh, I can do better. I can do better. Let's also get the fleet in. Yes. Blockading them, besieging them. Ah, beautiful. Barely any casualties. Maximum reward. Occupy the city. And then I can move this guy over there. And next turn. Ooh, he's got troops though. Uh-oh. That is a lot of troops I just saw. I'm gonna need to group up my armies. I'll take Constantina. Should be easy now. Very easy. And now I know where his armies are. So they got a stack there, a stack there. I think they're going to go for Constantina. So I'll move this army in support. I have ranged. And these guys could go for Hadramentum or Constantina. If they go for Hadramentum, though, I'm probably fine. And I'll use Tilikos forces to attack this stack. I think they'll just run away. Yeah, they're cowards. And we'll move there to mutually support. Should be okay. Leave the fleet here. Yeah, using agents to get around to do a little, little scouting is um, definitely good. Because I've just noticed we have some approaching barbarians here. I could take out the Ostrogoths and the West German protests immediately. There's the stack of Gr Gruthungians there and one up there. If I leave Verona, I might be in trouble, but I need to take these guys out soon. I don't want to give them the opportunity to pose a real threat, so I'm going to use the army. Just continuously reposition troops. I don't know if I can take these two stacks. They're at full strength and my guys have taken something of a beating. Yeah, I'm going to fall back to Hadramentum. Somewhere I can get some food or at least get some replenishment because this is this is bad what if i join the east in fight ah i got a little trick here i'm gonna ask the easterners if they need help i'll offer to help fight the Sassanid empire they like that i'm gonna get paid for that at least i hope i will all right three grand for that i'm now at war with the Sassanids. tough enemy but they're really far away so i don't really care now we are going to talk to the huns yo huns you might want to join our war with the Sassanid empire and they were like nah, not really how about i pay you a lot of money for it. I mean, a lot of money for it. Eh, they're looking like, uh, there we go, 15,000. Yes, a big chunk of my budget, but it means I'll have the Huns fighting the Sassanids. They'll be far away from me, hopefully. They'll be getting a lot of their strength spent, hopefully, and their relations with me go up, which is good because I don't want them to fight me. I don't think 
Dimidi is going to be a problem for much longer. The East is bringing two stacks in. That is also their final province. That should make that problem go away. I'll pull the armies back out once everything here is crushed. And we'll head back over here, see if we can do something about this annoying amount of barbarians we've got. Because this is like an obnoxious amount of barbarians. Really getting stupid, and I'd like to take care of it now. And the really annoying thing is they constantly run away. Kill the cowards! Ah, I think we caught him. So we've got both the Ostrogoths and uh, the Grithungians in this. I think we can kill them. Aggressive. I don't even want to fight that on the battle map because it's pointless. I killed more than I lost. This is fair. Beautiful. And now we just kill the Ostrogoths as well. And they're also dead. Ah, the flanks of the Empire are once again secure. Demidi still has a pretty big stack in it. What if I bring two armies? Eh, a little more fair. I think I just want to fight this one, actually. Let's see how they deployed. Annoyingly, as always. Well, I'll just go shoot at their stuff then. I do have a bunch of units still on the way, but they start so far off. Oh, uh, my horses are all fouling each other. I can't really get a good charge in. Yeah, I know they got their own spearmen coming in, so I don't think I'll be able to fight their desert chieftain fairly. Oh, I don't want to fight him fairly. I just want to have the massive advantage of 4 to 1. And the artillery isn't really all that valuable. They've not done much for us. Aha! We got their general. The rest of the bodyguard doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna finish it off if I can. Take out that cav with the infantry. These guys move up to take out the hurdlers and swing around to take the cav from the rear. This line should hold. Let's get some archer support in there. It gets so congested that it's entirely pointless to even fight in the area. Up here it's going reasonably well. Yeah, my units have higher quality, but they have a lot of their stuff here. Yeah, we'll start cycling charging their pile of spears over there and that's gonna be fine if I can get a couple of charges into the enemy rear from this and then withdraw and get a fresh charge in and withdraw we're gonna dip their orc I uh, mean their um, morale <laughs> I have that hoy brain going at any rate we're broken we've broken them here Get the army in. And now it's over. It's over. Another charge to the rear here. Those confident spears they're gonna be a whole lot less confident in a minute. Yes, decisive. Let's see what I lost, because I... I Ew, some of my units took a beating. It's so annoying to dislodge spears in numbers. It's not as bad as I thought. That's good. I'm gonna sack it and then probably tear it down. All right, let's take out this last stack and I think, oops, I accidentally auto-resolved it. That wasn't clever. Oh, it doesn't matter. We beat him anyway. The Gara mansions are destroyed. The African campaign was a success at least. If I can just take Dardania, I get access to lead and I could maybe um, subjugate Dacia, get them off my back. Let's declare war. I should not... No, nobody really minds, so let's just go in there. Oh, I've gone down to dependable. Hmm, maybe they must have considered it to be an act of treachery. Should be able to take him out quickly. Got two stacks ready. Could actually bring a third stack in as well if it's not too far off. There we go. Beautiful. And simple occupation. Take Sertica. Viminac. And then we'll uh, colonize the last city. Best part of this, these guys are very closely aligned to my own faction. So I don't even need to do all that much converting. I'm just going to come in here and uh, tear it up. Africa's also bringing in a lot of gold. This was definitely worth taking. All right, that should be all I want in the area. I'll just occupation. Perfect. I'll sign a peace deal with them now. I don't want to fight them overly much. Oh, I can't afford the repair costs, really. All right, payments, peace deal. And and allow them to colonize Pannonia, Dalmatia, whatever they want, and they'll convert it to my religion, they'll convert it to my culture, and everybody wins. So that was a quick strike, but a good one. Well, at least I can always bribe the Huns to attack my enemies. So uh, you go fight the Picts then. Some allies are just the best. We've signed a defensive alliance with the Huns through just really good diplomacy, I guess, and money, well, mostly money. And they're standing there, four armies around my capital, raiding the hell out of this place. Why? <laughs> Why is the AI like this? I'm going to take my mind off that by um, conquering Aquitaine, I think. There's some enemies here who have uh, definitely been investing in these uh, cities. I'll conquer Aquitaine, and then we move on and see if anyone else wants to have a piece of the Roman army. Well, I'm a little confused. I show up here to take these cities, and the three or four armies they had nearby just vanished. I'm certain they're gonna do something to me that's that's really nasty, and I'm gonna, gonna really regret, but for the time being, I can 
take the free cities. I mean, th th there's nothing there. Simply occupy and we move into our own neighborhood again. I think I found those armies that were hiding and they've decided, oh my God, they've decided to dogpile Elusa because that army's all on its own in a pretty much destroyed settlement. It's not the world's greatest layout either. So I think they kind of just went and stocked up on mercenaries and now they're coming for me. Oh, we'll have to fight this on the battlefield. Oh God, this is a terrible settlement to defend. I can make this work. I have to, f yeah, they'll have to force their way th through here. Good luck doing that. If I put my Federati there, they're not pushing through that square. I have a couple of archers. I have a couple of slingers. We'll put up a barricade there. Probably park the archers on there because archers have like a really stupid rate of fire if you put them on a barricade. A couple of slingers I have. Really not sure what to do with those, if I'm honest. Probably get a line of fire out over there. And then like the javelin boys, for all the good they'll do me, I'll put them on the walls as well. And then just bring everybody in. All right, that leaves me with the cavalry. I can potentially do something with the cav. These guys can deploy in forests and like uh, vanguard deploy. So I'll hide them and try to charge into the rear of enemies trying to push through either here or trying to push through there and uh, these guys can't vanguard deploy but they can hide in forest and i'll hide them along looks like they're all going to commit to a charge and i'm gonna bring these cavalry units in from the rear try to take out as many archers as i can and potentially their warlord as well if the general dies the army usually has a really bad day i'm gonna hit their general and then pull out uh, once it turns out i can't really beat him <laughs> <laughs> Classic move. The charge has completely failed. They just completely failed to charge. I could just run them right in and they, they just didn't charge. Like half of them got stuck on this stupid ledge here and nothing happened. Let's try that charge again. This is looking better. Okay, so we're killing some of his dudes. Right, let's charge his archers. Celtic bows, goodbye. Cycle charge, cycle charge, kill the horses, kill the general. Just gotta kill the general. These are broken, but I need them to be completely routed. There, they're, they're out, they're out. All right, let's get out, get out, get out. Charge the general. All right, that general's dealt with. And we'll now bring up some of the cavalry while we ride down the general. Need to kill him though, for the morale penalty. All right, general is dead. Good, good, good. Now bro go up and get the archers. Oh, sweet, 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 sweet. That's almost all the archers dealt with. If they can't shoot at me, I'll be, I'll be happy. Cavalry has been taking a beating though, but I, I, I still need them. I cannot afford to just let the cavalry die. I will need to do some rear charges of these guys that are gonna get stuck on the blob, or I need to move them up to take out those berserkers and the other axe infantry. Oh, they got so many units. It's really the axe infantry that I'm worried about. Still good results so far. We've killed a lot and we haven't really lost that much yet. That's a killing field out here. So many of their units are routing before actually even engaging us. And my cavalry is pretty much spent. Come on, take the archers and then we'll set up again. Oh, look at that. Point blank into the Celtic Axe Band. They got good missile block chance, which is a problem, but the fire arrow should scare them off. Perfect. Oh, love to see it. Love to see it. Cavalry is wavering. It's exhausted. It's shaken, but they've done more than their share. <laughs> It was an absolute godsend that we killed that general. The fact that they just left him uh, unprotected for our cavalry to pick off is a godsend because they all have so bad, such bad, like really, really bad morale. Oh yeah, now the cavalry is starting to break, but it's okay. They've done all the damage I need them to do. It's over though. I'm glad I won this. This was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. Mostly because, like I said, that general, getting that general was vital. I think we've got it. Victory! Ah, let's just end it. Heroic victory. Love to see it. I'm gonna save that one. Ow! I killed more than 10 times what I lost. <laughs> oh, I'm proud of this one. I am proud of this one. Did not lose a single unit. Wiped out one army and uh, forced the other two to definitely retreat in shame. Now I know I need to bring my army over there. So a few more turns in and the glory of Rome creeps ever forward. Uh, we've reclaimed most of Gaul. I'm still missing Maxima Sequinor. Forum. I can repopulate that if I wanted to, and Belgica. I just don't want to colonize these because it's slow and expensive. So the provinces we have taken are pretty good. I just need to fix food. We are going to North Africa because um, almost none of this is in the hands of the Eastern Roman Empire now. There's some very angry Sassanids, a bunch of rebels, some Garamanchans who are back with a vengeance, and I will need to clean house. So I am bringing three armies and a fleet south towards Africa, and then I'm going to tear it up.
and very, very unfortunately, the Huns have decided to no longer fight the Sassanids. I need to resolve that, so I am in a pickle. And I've got a bunch of these migratory tribes in my areas as well, and I can't deal with them. They're too big to just send a stack out and fight them and they're too spread out to just bully them by ganging up on them and uh, this is so annoying I have to let them walk through because i can't stop them but i know that at some point they are going to like like walk into italy and then suddenly declare war on me and take take like a, a, a poorly defended settlement and there's nothing i can do about that so i'm just gonna start marching armies into egypt beat the persians as hopefully as best i can seize egypt and keep begging people for peace because I, I cannot fight everyone. This is too many people to fight at once. So it's happened. It has begun. The hordes are coming for my land and they're hitting Toronum. So I can't beat these guys in a fair fight. Like This is not gonna work. I might be able to hold the settlement if they decide to assault me because other than that onager, I don't think any of the other things can really hurt me, but they'll just starve me out and I don't want to fight them out in the open. However, this is Stilico, a really good general. Who knows how to use a night attack. I'm going to sally forth, lock all of his supporting armies out, and kill that man fair and square. That's one army down. So yeah, I'm super bogged down now, but uh, we're in the end stretch. We're going for gold. We're going for broke. I will kill them or die trying. Rome triumphs, Rome conquers all, and there will be no mercy. Can probably take another stack out. Again, very unfavorable. Unless I do a night attack, then it's suddenly very favorable. And that's two stacks down. Ooh, they're going to feel that. I get 8% of my casualties back, so that's cool. So I think with that, we've resolved this tragedy. So preemptive aggression, instead of sitting there and letting them starve us out, has definitely paid off. Set up in our cities again. They will come to try and hurt us. And that is simply unacceptable. I've taken Alexandria, though, so Persians can get fucked, respectfully, of course. So at least we'll be able to take the entirety of Egypt relatively easy, because this is just a small faction. This is a small faction. Should be able to overwhelm them. Oh, this is perfect. So we just took out three of their armies, and suddenly they are a lot more likely to have peace, and they, they just want us to uh, go away, which I can get behind. Let them fight the Huns, let them fight the Jutes, and let them fight the Abdanians. Leave Rome alone. I'm willing to pay you to just go away. Way. Our emperor, beloved by all, has um, managed to get himself pinned down by two armies. And we are pretty badly outnumbered. They are attacking me, so maybe in the desert I can make a stand on one of these hills. We'll quickly fight this on a battle map, see what we can do. I would like to retain enough strength to take that settlement, though. They have so many desert raiders. That's annoying. Their general is also on a horse. Their general is out of position, though, so maybe if I can overwhelm them with numbers, I can uh, get something out of it. Oh, yeah, they do have excellent attack, just just not when outnumbered three to one. All right, so it's one unit of a horseman down in exchange for half a unit of my step lancers, uh, step archers, whatever. Nothing they have particularly scares me. I think most of the infantry doesn't even have armor or, or any decent sort of armor piercing. But the onagers could be annoying if they can get them into position. Let's just hope they don't. I am just so disappointed with these archers, though. They haven't killed anything. They're not even annoying the enemy. They're just a waste of space. Base. Yeah, they haven't killed a single one of the Onager crew. They have burned one Onager, so yay. Well, at least we get their artillery out of the way. And then I got my cavalry in a reasonably good position to rear charge the enemy. Cavalry's wiped out the artillery. That's one concern less. Let's bait the general into attacking. See if they want to bring him south. And if they do, I'm going to throw all that cavalry at him. Now charge him. Get these guys into a side position to charge his unprotected flank. You shoot him. We have to kill the general to stand a chance. There's too many of their damn horses. I can't stop them from charging me like this. You just shoot at the horses then. We got him. Okay, we got him to disengage. Let the spears solve the issue now. Back to this general. So we're going to kill their general. All right, the enemy general's dead. Bring these guys up. We're going to do a bunch of rear charges into the enemy front. Oh, no, 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 no. Not my general. Not my general. Oh, there go my archers. This is infuriating. This is just absolutely infuriating. Yes, yes, yes. I know. It's all historical and the desert tribes and their mighty horse warriors. It's just so annoying. This is where we play the oblique flank. One flank has won its engagements. We roll it into the enemy flank now. And we use our cavalry to charge their rear line. And then pull back. Yeah, they're all at very low morale now because the general died. That was that was brilliant. Every unit we destroy, we won't have to fight in the next turn. If they don't retreat, but they are instead destroyed, we win. Perfect. 
All right, this battle's won. And now we need to mop up. Kill as many of these running units as possible. So no unit escapes unscathed. Preferably. I don't want these guys reforming and continuing to be a problem. Heroic victory. Not bad. Yeah, I lost the terrible horses. That's fine. Should still have the strength to take that city and that army shouldn't be too much of a concern. Turn 99. We're almost there. Just a little bit of mopping up to do. I'd say the Empire's strong. Also, navies are amazing when it comes to intercepting because they have a giant... Well, giant. They have a very large army and they stand no chance against a dedicated navy. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. And they're gone. I tried fighting this battle before. I lost so horribly, I didn't even feel like including it in the recording. This battle, <laughs> I don't know why the AI definitely wants to engage me here. It thinks the Persian army is going to help. This battle, I'll quickly auto resolve. So, unfortunately, like, Attila, love the pressure, love the setting, love saving Rome, hate the field battles because the AI cheats are too egregious. They are stupid to the point that they're no longer fun. You can win them, sure, but I prefer, like, the Total War Rome battles or any other battle, really, because this is just stupid. And I think that's the ending cinematic. That means we have reached turn 101. We have played over 100 turns. Love the cinematic, but uh, yeet. There we go. I think this is the point where the King of the Huns is crowned. Attila seizes control. All right, let's take quick stock of how things stand here. Western Rome, powerful. We've lost ground. Yes, but we are the undeniable number one great power in the world, an intimidating imperium, we are vastly wealthy. Let's see what the game thinks we are. Our wealth is spectacular. We have 10 armies. We are the top dog. I've pretty much secured Gaul now that the Abdanians have been defeated in the region. They might still have some people in boats, but I can kill those boats. And I think I can take Berenice if I wanted to play out this turn. We'll, we'll give that a try. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my first foray into Total War. I hope to branch out the channel to a couple more games. If you guys have suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. I'm thinking Rome, Total War, Total War 2, some Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings, maybe even some Stellaris. I hope you guys at least enjoyed the video. Hope to see you guys in the next one as well. Goodbye and never forget, glory to Rome. Roma Invicta.